que eu gostei. 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 Did she come to the day? No, she no, she didn't. She was not there. No, no she was not there. No, 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 This is Franciscan Media's Saint of the Day for April 16th. Today we celebrate Saint Bernadette Subaru. Tsk, tsk, what's the problem with that poor ignorant girl who claims that the Blessed Mother has appeared to her? Poor Bernadette indeed, the uneducated French peasant who first reported visions of Mary in Lourdes, France in 1858 was disbelieved by clergy and dismissed by townspeople, but she wasn't shaken. She insisted that Mary had appeared to her 18 times over six months, and she reported Blessed Mother identified herself as the Immaculate Conception, a title given Mary by Pope Pius IX only four years earlier. According to young Bernadette, Mary called for the conversion of sinners through penance. She also urged people to visit the place of the apparitions and ask that a church be built on the site. Since then, millions of people have bathed in the springs at Lourdes, and many have reported miraculous healings. Bernadette joined the sisters Notre Dame at Nevers. There she lived as Sister Maria Bernarda until her death in 1879 at age 35. She was canonized in 1933. There's more about the seats along with inspiration and Catholic resources at our website, saintoftheday.org. From Franciscan Media, this has been Saint of the Day. Thank you for your kind attention. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I learned how to use this book, so I'm going to put it to the side. <laughs> so let us start this celebration this morning in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, the Lord invites us to this table today to share in the body of Christ. Bless Him for His goodness. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves for this celebration. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, to heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who open wide the gates of the heavenly kingdom to those reborn of water and Holy Spirit, pour out on your servants an increase of the grace you have bestowed, that having been purged of all sins, they may lack nothing 
that in your kindness you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen said to the people, the elders and scribes, You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always oppose the Holy Spirit. You are just like your ancestors. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They put to death those who foretold the coming of the righteous one, whose betrayers and murderers you have now become. You received the law as transmitted by angels, but you did not observe it. When they heard this, they were infuriated, and they ground their teeth at him. But Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked up intently to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And Stephen said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they crowd out in, in, in a loud voice, covered their ears, and rushed upon him together. They threw him out of the city and began to stone him. The witnesses laid down their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they were stoning Stephen, they cried out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell to his knees and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he said this, he fell asleep. Now Saul was consenting to his execution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. You are my rock and my fortress. For your sake's namesake, you will lead and guide me. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, Commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, faithful God. My trust is in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. You hide me in the shelter of your presence from the plotting of men. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah! Hallelujah! I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. The crowd said to Jesus, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, and as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven, and it gives life to the world. So they said to Jesus, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So 
to start, let me give you an appetite, sir, since we're talking about bread. <laughs> a little short story about a wealthy man that decided to build a mansion in the middle of nowhere on the top of a dry mountain. He wanted a mansion with an exotic pool, but there was one slight problem. Water was limited, and he, he did not have enough water to fill the pool. So the wealthy man had a brilliant idea. He decided to throw a party and invite as many people as possible, and all he asked from his guests was to bring water with him. Some people were thinking, this guy is crazy. <laughs> Others thought, eh, he's just joking. And some took him seriously. The day of the party came, and all the guests starting, started arriving. Some came without water. Others came with cups, <coughs> bottles, gallons, and a few came with barrels of water. Halfway through the party, the pool was full of water, and anyone that wanted to jump in and to swim did so. It was very late at night, and the party came to an end, and the wealthy man was so happy and thankful with his guests that he told them that as a token of appreciation for coming to the party and for bringing the water, they could fill their empty water containers with gold and take them home with them. As you notice, those that came with nothing left and candid. Those that brought something left with something. And those who brought a lot took with them plenty. There are three occurrences written in the scriptures in the gospel, especially in the gospel of John, including one we just heard today, in which the word of God is misunderstood. The first occurrence is found in chapter 3. The Pharisee man, uh, named Nicodemus, who asked Jesus to meet with him. Nicodemus was not like all the Pharisees. He truly believed that Jesus was sent by God. But he had doubts. And he did not understand what Jesus meant when he told him, <coughs> Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. The second occurrence can be found in chapter 4, when Jesus was passing by the car at noon, and he sat down at a well to have a drink of water and coincided with a Samaritan woman. After an exchange of words, Jesus said to the Samaritan woman, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to Jesus, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. The third occurrence is the one we just heard in chapter 6 today, where Jesus said, For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. The people responded to Jesus, Sir, Give us this bread always. When they responded to Jesus, they were thinking about the feeding of the 5,000 and what Moses did for the Israelites, as is written in the book of Exodus, chapter 16. What an audacity of the people to ask Jesus to perform a sign so they can be. If we read this chapter from the beginning, chapter 6, we know that Jesus fed over 5,000 people. According to them, this was no greater sign than what Moses did for the Israelites. Jesus also walked on water, but they were not impressed either. Moses had parted the Red Sea. My brothers and sisters, believing in Jesus means that first we have to know him well so that we can understand his message clearly. And thus, we can place our faith in him. <clears throat> Only then will we accept that he is who he says he is and that he will do what he says he will do. And how not to believe him? 
Look at this crucifix. He's capable of that. Look at what he just did. Just to reconcile us with God our Father. My brothers and sisters, let's ask ourselves, how hungry are we today? And what are we hungry for? I am sure for those of you fasting or have not had breakfast like me, all we can think of it is scrambled eggs, hash browns, toast, orange juice, coffee, or hot chocolate for some. If we're thinking this way, then we're missing the point. Just like Nicodemus, just like the Samaritan woman, just like the crowd who was following Jesus. When we go to a restaurant for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, do we eat before going? Or do we hold off on eating anything? Of course we go with an empty stomach so that we have room for the food that we will consume. So when we come to church to Mass, of a communion service like this one today, we must use the same principle. We have to come ready. We have to empty ourselves and let the Lord fill us with the Holy Spirit. That way our spirit will not hunger or thirst. Each one of us is here because we know this. Deep in our hearts, we believe this. Is not? My brothers and sisters, God invites us to come to his house to come to us. He wants us to bring all of our afflictions that in exchange he will give us peace. To bring all of our pains that in return he will give us comfort. And to bring all of our doubts that in return he will give us confidence. Whatever it is that is eating us, just bring it to the Lord that he is ready to receive it. He is ready to take it from us. Or at least he's ready to help us carry it. Let's ask God to give us the courage of Stephen to keep our eyes fixed in heaven, fixing him until he comes again. Jesus, today, as we receive the Holy Communion, is going to look at us face to face. And he will ask us, what are you filling your life with, if not with I? What are you filling your mind with, if not with I? What are you filling your spirit with, if not with I? Remember what Jesus said. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. And whoever believes in me will never thirst. Do we believe this? Jesus, we trust in you. Amen. Mindful of our needs. For God in all things, let us bring to Him our petitions. For the Pope and bishops around the world, may God continue to bless and sanctify them in their service to others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For political leaders and the responsibility to care for all creation. May God give them their wisdom to lead well. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer from anxiety or fear, may God grant them peace and comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community and our work in discipleship, may God continue deepening our commitment to spreading the gospel, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may God's perpetual light shine upon them, and may they rest in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who are sick, especially Father Fernando, Jose Cruz, Tonita Lopez, and all of those that we know are sick, but that we don't have their names here. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, hear and answer the needs we place before you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my roof, but I only say the word, and my soul shall be
we recall the words of our brother Jesus in the last minute of his life and repeated today by Holy Stephen. In mars to us, Domine, commendo spiritu meum, alleluia, alleluia. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Alleluia. Alleluia. Yes, sir, so okay. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the Lord bless us, protect us from evil, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. You have a wonderful day.